what if you had three red flags to look out for that you may be heading for burnout and might be in a place where you're going to have to be reactive instead of proactive in protecting your mental health? Let's get to this information right now. Hey there, and welcome to episode 265 of the Roadmap to Referrals podcast. I'm your host, Stacey Brown Randall. My journey from a business failure to a successful business, now 10 years in, I know that generating referrals naturally and consistently has made all the difference. Working with clients around the world, we leverage the science of referrals, protect relationships above all else, and help you build a referable business. Hey, real quick, before we dive in to this really informative and fun episode, I want to ask you a quick question. How would you like to hang with me this summer? Okay, okay. So maybe it won't be in person and it won't be, you know, at a really cool location. It'll be online and it'll be you in summer school with me as your professor. (laughs) I want to invite you to attend our referrals summer school. That's right. You heard me. We are doing three classes this summer, all about referrals, and it's in our summer school. And I hope that you will sign up to join us. So here's how this works, right? You're going to sign up for summer school by going to stacybrownrandall.com forward slash summer school. And when you sign up, you're going to get access to all three classes. And I'm really hoping you join me live. They're uh, in July. They're going to be about 30 to 45 minutes, depending how many questions you guys as students ask me. And they're going to be classes on, the first class is going to be Referrals 101. And that's called Get Your Foundation Right. So you'll leave the Referrals 101 class having all the definitions correct and understanding who the players are, the science behind consistent referrals, and the philosophy from which we operate. Then you're going to move into Referrals 201, our second class, which is all about ecosystems and your gaps. You're going to leave that class and having a deeper understanding of the referral ecosystem that's available within your business, like as in right now, and identify your gaps so you know what you can start working on. Plus, if you've never identified your referral sources, I'm going to walk you through it in three easy steps. And then we've got our last class, which is Referrals 301. And then we're going to build the second half of your 2023 action plan. Meaning, you know, the back half of 2023, you got to have a plan for referrals if you want to end the year referral stronger. So You need to learn it now. So in this class, we're going to get tactical and practical. You'll learn some key referral seeds that you need to know how to plant, which are actually easier than you think. And I'm going to help you build out your action plan for more referrals for the back half of 2023. So like I said, each class will be about 30 to 45 minutes. There are three of them. And when you register for summer school, you will get access to all three classes. And before you ask, yes. There will be a replay for each class. So if you can't attend live, you will still be able to get all the good knowledge bombs and all the learning that I will be given. I hope that you actually decide to join me live because I think I'm a lot of fun and I think we'll have a lot of fun if you're there. And being there live, you always pick up more information and then you can ask questions so you get direct, immediate feedback, which is also really good, right? Something we absolutely all of us want as well. So again, the link to sign up for summer school is stacybrownrandall.com forward slash summer school. And guess what? The first class is tomorrow, my friend. So you got to be there or be square, which means you need to stop what you're doing unless you were driving and go sign up right now. stacybrownrandall.com forward slash summer school. Get your slip to join the class. You just got to sign up so you can get all the information and be there with us tomorrow. July 12th is actually our very first class. So make sure you sign up now. Okay, let's get back to the show. So we are in the middle of our of our summer series, right? We have been doing a summer series on the business owner mindset. And I have been having the best time with these conversations, and I hope you are learning a lot. We have talked about a number of really cool topics from executive state versus survival state. We've talked about belief formation, habit formation, and today we have another fabulous conversation for you. And this is all about mental health and the protection of our mental health. And I got to tell you, 
Uh, I there there's definitely some aha moments throughout this episode that I had. So I cannot wait for you guys to hear from Coach Kami. She is amazing. And she said some things that I was like, okay, I'm getting called out right now on the spot. And she didn't even know it, but it was called out in a good way. And she really does share a lot of great information and a way to kind of shift your thinking about being proactive with your mental health versus what a lot of business owners do is wait until we've we've blown past all the warning signs and now we're in a reactive state of taking care of ourselves. Because remember, we need all of ourselves, our whole selves, to be able to build a business that works for us, that we can also enjoy the journey as we are running and managing this business. So let me tell you a little bit about Kami Andrea. She's affectionately known as Coach Kami, and she is the founder of the Catalyst Coach Academy and the CEO of Catalyst Global. She uses proven systems and methodologies to assist individuals in clarifying, creating, and sustaining successful outcomes, not only professionally, but also personally. She is an author, a coach, and she is a certified NLP practitioner with over 15 years in her industry. She's been featured on a lot of amazing publications like the HLN and of course led workshops for various city and state governments and has private clients around the world. All right, so here we go. Here's my conversation and I know you guys are going to enjoy this and you're probably going to learn a little bit more about me in the process as well. Kami, I am so excited to welcome you to the podcast. This is going to be a great conversation. And I know just from the little bit we chatted before we hit record is also going to be high energy. So I am excited to spend this time with you. Now, I told the audience a little bit about you, you know, and I read the bio right when we did the intro, but I think it would also be great if you just told us a little bit about yourself, about your work, you know, the things that really aren't in your bio that my audience audience would be interested in. I love it. So first of all, Stacey, let me just say thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited about today's conversation. Kami Andrea, right, is my name, and I'm the CEO of thecatalystglobal.com, which is a leadership coaching and consulting firm. We do mostly B2B work, but I'm also an internationally credentialed coach. And my niche is working with high-performing, ambitious female leaders Uh, And in light of today's conversation, it's really awesome that the work that I do helps these women align themselves like the mind, body, spirit, right? Because we believe that once that's aligned, that they can manifest in their business, in their life, what it is that they want to manifest. I think that's fabulous. And I think that being a business owner yourself, like you really walk in the same shoes, you know, a lot of times, especially walking in the same shoes as my audience, and then as the people that you work with as well. And as we're doing this business owner mindset series Mm -hmm. here Mm -hmm. on the podcast, as part of our summer series, you know, we've been talking about a lot of different things from like this, the, the mindset state that you're in when you're operating executive state versus um, survival state and recognizing that if you're not careful, you'll spend all your time in survival state, which is Mm -hmm. not helpful. And then we talked a lot about habit formation and where those come from, where do those, no, and belief formation, like where do your beliefs come from, where mm. the habits that you have. And I think that these are, you know, these aren't, I think the typical topics that people would expect. And we have more coming, right, as well. But like these aren't the typical topics I think people expect when you're talking about like, hey, be a great business owner. I think people are like productivity and how do you get more done and But the longer you're in business, you're like, oh, actually, what's going on between my ears really matters more than any tactic or any strategy or anything that I can do. And so I was so glad when we were connected because I think what you do in terms of how you help your clients also helps them with burnout and mental health. And that's what we're going to spend some time talking about today. So are you ready? I am ready. Let's go. Awesome. Okay. So here's the thing. I know when I say mental health, probably most people like, they're like, yep, I gotcha. Like I'm all, I got this. I know what that looks like, but I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, I know there's like the academic version of mental health. There's the healthcare version of mental health. And I think like, I think those are all like one big definition of mental health, but for you, how do you define mental health? I just want to make sure that, you know, my listeners and I are all on the same page with you. 
Yeah, yeah. So for us, mental health refers to our overall emotional, psychological, social well-being, right? It encompasses how we think, how we feel, how we behave. It affects how we handle stress. It affects how we make decisions as business owners, how we relate to others. And when you think about, you mentioned it not too long ago, the work that we do as small business owners it, our mental health directly impacts our ability to handle challenges, to make sound decisions, to, to maintain those healthy relationships. And at the end of the day, it affects how we run our business, right? Stress is not like that is not lost on us <laughs> small business owners, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's about finding that balance and managing stress and maintaining those positive emotions in coping with setbacks. Because again, that's something that as business owners, we regularly experience, right? So it's it's not it's not mental illness, which is where people like sometimes automatically go yeah. when we, when we talk about mental health, it, it's, it's so much more than that. Oh, that's so good because you're right. I bet there are folks that when you say mental health, and if you're not, if you're not in a place or a space where you're actively working on your mental health, protecting it, nurturing mm-hmm. it, right. All the things. And you're not like being conscious of what that looks like. And that's being proactive with your right. mental health. I can see how people would probably assume, wait, what we're talking about is mental illness. And it's, you're right. It's um, mental illness obviously is an important piece of it. And a piece that, you know, people need to be getting support and help for if they're dealing with that, but that's just a part of it within our mental health, there's so much more. And that proactiveness is really what I want us to focus on for this conversation. Um, Because, you know, one of the things, I I don't care if you've been a business owner for like 10 days Mm -hmm. or 10 years like me, Mm -hmm. you you intimately know what it's like to be like, what am I doing? And, And the stress and everything, right? I mean, like, and you talked about how when, you know, we're not always thinking as clearly as we need to because of things going on. That I mean, I think about that from that perspective, like this is not a, like a mental health example, but it's a physical health example. Like I think mm-hmm. about when, you know, like I'm in physical pain. So I had mentioned this earlier um, in a couple of episodes that I've been dealing with some back pain. And sometimes, you know, you can just stand or sit too long and things can just right. feel you know, irritated. And I can find myself in that irritated state and then typing out an email. And then at least I learned this forever ago. You hit pause on yourself and quickly reread the email before you hit send. Uh Right. That's just an automatic behavior in me. I learned that the hard way after (laughs) multiple reasons I needed to learn it, but I can go back and reread that email and be like, whoa, that's right. not even nice. That's yeah. not even who I want to be in that moment, right? Or yeah. like dealing with physical pain and then my kids asking me a question and I just want to like bite their heads off, but mm-hmm. not them. And not, mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes they're asking the same question like 14 times, but like a lot of times it's just because I'm in pain and that's not right. just physical, right? I mean, my example was physical, but that yeah. happens mentally as well. Right, it does. And and I would even render to suggest that the the physical pain sometimes in a, is a a manifestation of what is happening emotionally, right? So you're not taking care of yourself mentally, emotionally, and, and even spiritually. And, you know, depending on your belief system, that can manifest as dis-ease. That's one of the things that we teach, right? Is to really look at what's what what are some of the possible underlying causes that are going on? What are, what are some of the underlying emotional challenges? And Stacey, it's funny because I am in the middle of, so we're going on what, four weeks now that I have been dealing with some extreme kind of shoulder pain. Some of it is because I'm on a computer, right? For, for so much, so long. Um, but a lot of it is I've realized that a lot of tension, a lot of stress, I keep in that shoulder, neck, you know, kind of head area. And this was a red flag for me. Like, okay, Kami, so what you need to do is kind of back away, <laughs> like intentionally carve out some self-care, figure out what's going on with you, which resulted in regular massages, right? It resulted in me taking more breaks from work and switching my mindset so that I 
I realized that it's not about how many hours I work, but really making sure that I take the breaks that I need to take to reset myself so that I can come back and come back and and be able to focus better. You know, I think that's so great that you kind of use that example with your shoulder pain, because it does make me think about the back pain that I have. And Mm -hmm. like at this point, it's like, you know, it's, it's an issue that's going to have to be dealt with medically, like however mm-hmm. we ultimately end up moving forward with it. But right. if I'm being totally honest, yeah. this started with a very small, annoying little pain mm. in my back that I just mm-hmm. ignored. I'm like, it's right. fine. I'll just right. do some more stretching. I'll just do some more walking. It's fine. And then you ignore it. And then in my case, I actually probably sought out the wrong first treatment for it, which may have made it worse. Mm-hmm. Now I'm like, okay, well, a little bit more walking isn't going to just <laughs> magically make this go away. Now I'm at the place where I'm like, well, this is my own fault. And you know, and it's true. Like, I think if I had paid attention to that annoying little pain and like recognized, Hey, I, I said a lot too. Like I tell myself I don't because like, I have to leave my office, like to walk back into the house to, you know, to get anything to eat or to, to use the restroom or whatever. Like, I feel like I'm constantly moving, but the truth is I do also sit for hours. Right. And like in my right. head, I was like, no, I'm moving. like the doctor would be like, well, how often do you move around? I'm like I'm moving. I'm like, well, <laughs> am I? Like, am I really? Right, right. And so it's true. Like it came down to that. Like it was that it, I ignored it. Mm-hmm. I didn't practice the self-care that I needed. I mean, even like at the beginning of the year, I had a massage therapist be like, you really need to go see somebody. Mm-hmm. And I was like, whatever, dude, mm-hmm. moving on. Mm-hmm. Like I got stuff to do, right? Like, right, right. And, like, and here I am. And so it's my own fault. Right? I mean that, or I, I, you know, I typically like to just blame my parents for most <laughs> Oh, my physical ailments. I'm like, I'm pretty sure this somehow had to be hereditary. Like, I don't, I don't know if it was or not. And my, I'm sure my my father's looking down from heaven. He's like, knock it off, Stacey. We are not the reason for all your problems. And I'm sure if my mom, who does not listen to my podcast, but I'm sure she did, she'd be like, excuse me, young lady. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Like, take okay. some ownership there, right? There's, I know. Like, there's some opportunity to take some ownership. And she'd be know. like, you are too old. To not right. be taking ownership. Right. She's like, isn't that the lesson you're trying to teach your children? Like, okay, <laughs> mama, thank you for putting me in my place. All yeah. right. So uh, yeah. I think this is so relevant for business owners to hear is that I think it's the, it's the proactiveness mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. we sometimes will overlook because we're so busy or ignore or maybe we're just in a pattern of always ignoring it. And then we get ourselves to a place where we have to be reactive. Mm -hmm. And I think living in a place of being proactive about mental health, about physical health, about your mindset, about all the things we're talking about, right? I think living in a place of proactiveness for that, that's actually really hard for people because it means you're always proactively thinking about everything in terms of how am I feeling? How, like, how am I thinking? Like, what are my thoughts? What am I like? What does my body feel like? And like being proactive and, and here's the thing for business owners, it's making the space to be proactive. It's like, you are going to go get massages. Well, right. you know, it's not like you can do that in 10 minutes. I mean, you can, but like most people want like 90 minutes, right? Like, right. You want, you got to create space for that. You got to create space to work out. You got to create space to take breaks. You got to create space to just let your mind wander, right? When you're sitting on your back deck, you know? And so like, but we're not great. Not all of us as business owners or humans in general, but business owners, I think we're just, we're just a special breed. We're not always great at being proactive with that. And so specifically for mental health, one of the things I think I see, a lot. And I've definitely seen it in myself over the last 10 years. I mean, and before that, I mean, I've been in this business for 10 years, but before that I had a business fail. So like there, I've seen this not only in my own self, but in others as well, is that it almost takes like to the brink of like burnout Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. before we're like, oh, maybe Mm -hmm. I should do something different. And then sometimes Mm -hmm. we do something different and things are good. And then we fall back into our default state of being of back to being reactive. So when you're having conversations with business owners about burnout, because it is real for everyone, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I I think it's about being on alert to recognize that burnout, that it's coming before it negatively impacts you as a human and your business success and your family or however you define your support system. Like, 
what would you tell people that we should be aware of or be on alert for or be paying attention to? And until we get ourselves to a state of always being proactive, what are the things we need to be on the lookout for before we're like headed off that cliff? That's a great question. So, you know, a couple of things come to my mind, right? As business owners, one of the things that I know is that we are no strangers to hard work. We're no strangers to long hours because we have, it's been ingrained in us that that is the process to success, right? So it's really crucial for us to be, to, as you said, to, to be on alert when we start feeling chronically tired, mentally and physically, even, and most of us don't get adequate rest. So just a sidebar, we should be getting about seven to eight hours of rest a night, right? Raise your hand tap yourself <laughs> if that's you, right? And so, so really being proactive and prioritizing that, setting your alarm uh, to go to sleep, to start that wind down routine, so that to make sure that you at least are getting that seven to eight hours, if you are doing that and you still wake up and you're tired, that's a red flag. Hey there, pardon the interruption. I just had to share these results with you. In 90 days, that's right, three months, in 90 days, a member of my Building a Referrable Business Coaching Program received 30 referrals. That is 150% increase, 150% more referrals than all of last year. So when you hear me talking about doubling, tripling, or quadrupling the referrals of my clients who are in my coaching program, this is what I'm talking about. Yes, this is what I mean. You need to join us inside BRB. We are waiting on you, and I can't wait to help you do the work and follow the roadmap so you can start doubling or tripling or quadrupling your referrals. And possibly within 90 days, like Randall did. So go to stacybrownrandall.com forward slash referrable to learn about everything you receive inside BRB and to submit your application. The link again is stacybrownrandall.com forward slash referrable. Okay, now back to the interview. You mentioned earlier irritability when your kids are asking you these questions, right? Becoming easily frustrated. Like, you know, they're teenagers. They're going to do teenager stuff. So when you realize that your response is a little different, that you are a little more impatient than you have been, that's another red flag. A couple other things. I, I love what I do. Right. And, and so I'm, I'm excited to be able to share these things with you, not just from a textbook, you know, this is what I learned in training, but also from this is what I've my lived experience. Right. I love what I do. And I started realizing that I was like, oh, when I wake up, I don't want to go in the office today. I don't want to work with this person. And it had nothing to do with the person. It was just like, I don't I don't want to do anything when you feel like that, when you lose interest in the things that used to excite you, or you're not willing to follow through on certain things, those are red flags that you are approaching burnout to a point that it can negatively impact your business. Okay. So I feel like I just got slightly called out. Ooh, <laughs> in a good, that. good, <laughs> nope. No, 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 no. In a very good way, because you said something I'd never thought of. Like I had never thought that like, if you're getting enough sleep and you Mm -hmm. still wake up tired, I was like, Mm -hmm. Oh, I never thought about that. Like, luckily I am like, I'm a sleep queen. I'm like, I want, I want my eight hours. I want them every single night. I I have, but I've now entered this stage where my kids stay up later than me. Most Mm -hmm. of the time in summertime, not really school year. Like we have that lockdown, but like, like phones are on the counter an hour before bedtime, like all that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And so we're all kind of going to bed at the same time during the school year, but it's summertime. And my kids are now 13, 14 and 15 years old. Like I got two high schoolers, like I got a rising eighth grader and two rising sophomores. And so it's like, I mean, they need to start, particularly the boys need to start like learning to make good decisions and make, you know, priority choices for how they take care of themselves, but (laughs) they're teenage boys. So it's like a Mm -hmm. long process. And so they go to bed later than us. And eventually my husband, and I'm like irritable about it because I'm Mm -hmm. like, 
are they going to bed at 11 o'clock? Because I'm in bed at 930. I'm hoping to be asleep by 10. <laughs> right. So like, are they going to bed at 11 o'clock? Are they staying up to midnight or 1 a.m.? And it, it's it, sometimes I'll find myself waking up at like two o'clock and wandering through the house and making sure all the lights are out, right? Like mm-hmm. I shouldn't, but they're children, right? Mm-hmm. And so, but it's it's interesting because my husband was like, what are you going to do when they are driving and their curfew is like midnight? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I am going to temporarily relieve myself from the mother role <laughs> and head to the mountains and come back when they go off to college, because I right. don't know. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know if I can survive this. And so he's like, oh, this is going to be a nightmare for everyone, including myself. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, my, my poor husband. But I was like, <laughs> but it's funny because I never thought about it in that way of like, if you wake up tired, mm-hmm. like that could be a red flag. Or if the irritability, like I never thought about irritability from that consideration being a red flag. Like the third mm-hmm. example you gave, like if you're, like the, oh, I don't want to do this today with work. And that's a continuation. That was me with my first business. Mm. I didn't want to talk about, so my first business, I was an HR consultant and I did a lot on generational diversity and employee engagement. Mm -hmm. And there were moments I'd be like, if I have to talk about these millennials one more time, Mm -hmm. I don't want to do this. I don't want to stand on that stage and talk about the differences between the boomers and the Xers and the millennials. Like, and I got tired on the topic yeah. In addition to the fact that my business was going down the drain because I wasn't really good at bringing in clients then, something I mm-hmm. learned, I figured out how to do better with this business. But that was for me, like, it, it, it I probably was like past the point of burnout because then eventually the business failed. And I had to, most people who listen to this podcast know my story. I had to go back to corporate America before I figured it out and started my second business. That's this business. But I never thought about the littler things that could be the red flags we need to pay attention to that we could be headed for some burnout. So thank you yeah. for bringing that to our attention. Yeah. And, and let me tell you, Stacey, you said something else that's really key. You like sleep, right? So you're intentional about making sure that you're in bed by 930, that you're hopefully sleep by 10. But if you're waking up in the middle of the night for any reason, then you might be sleeping, but you're not getting good sleep or you're getting right. interrupted sleep. And that that matters. That's important. Yes, I am slowly but surely. You know how it is? It's like baby steps. It's like yeah. at first you wake up and it's two o'clock and you're wandering through the house and then you're like, this is stupid. <laughs> and so the next time you wake up at two o'clock, you're like, dude, you're not getting out of bed. You're not allowed to get out of bed. Just right. run back over and go to sleep. And right. Norm and I have a sleep number bed. So we actually have the app that tells me Mm. how I'm sleeping and when did I get out of bed and when was I restless and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So I also have something that holds me honest. Yeah. Like, you know, it keeps me honest. And so I can see, you know, I try to always be above 80%, getting over, getting close to 90 whenever I can. But you're nice. right. There's some nights I wake up. I'm like, oh, look at that. That was a 40% night. Mm. No wonder I'm tired. But mm-hmm. to your point, for me, that's not the norm. But I'm guessing yeah. for some, it totally is the norm mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that waking up tired. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, that is a that's a great point. Okay. So let's talk then about as so my audience is listening to this conversation and maybe they're having those aha moments like I've been having as well. Let's let's talk about some strategies or tools or tactics or anything that you have in your toolbox that can help us be proactive about, you know, just not only paying attention, but like managing and being like proactive when it mm-hmm. comes to our mental health. So there are four tips that I give, right? The first is routine, establishing a routine. I like to say routine is king, or in my case, it's queen, right? And you want to establish a routine that allows you to have breaks in your day, that allows you to exercise, that allows you to take vacations, to rejuvenate yourself, and allows you, as we talked about recently, sleep. Sleep is really, really important for mental health, for um, repairing our body. Uh, So that's number one, right? Routine. Number two, as business owners, we got to learn to delegate. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Let me just pause there. Right. We, we're a, a lot of folks that I run into that are small business owners or even solo solopreneurs. It's like, you want to step away and look at everything that does not require your direct involvement. If it doesn't require your direct involvement, delegate that, right? Learn mm-hmm. to delegate. Number three, third party support. You got to seek support. I like to say it's really difficult for you to see the picture when you're in the frame. And if you 
connect with a coach, you connect with a, a, an accountability team, like something like that, then they can, you want to really establish a support network where they can help you and kind of call out some things for you that maybe you're not seeing. And the fourth, which surprises so many people is supplementation. I think at this stage that we're in, um, especially in, in the United States, we're past the conversation about, well, should we supplement? Can I get all the nutrients that my body needs, that my mind needs from foods? And it's like, no, this is not the same food that our grandparents ate, right? <laughs> <laughs> what? You mean Cheetos? What? No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Right? That's Cheetos. I'm sorry. It's actually Takis in our household. I was just getting ready to say that. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. right? That's just so, nasty. Yeah, but keep going. So sorry. Bad. It is so bad. Um, so, you know, supplementation is important for cognitive function. It is important for our mental well being. And so I offer seek out, if you don't know the word nootropics, look it up N O O T R O P I C S. Or um, the other thing are methylated B vitamins. Those are the two supplements that I'm like, that needs to be a part of your everyday routine, your everyday habit, because your brain needs it. I feel like we could probably do a whole other episode mm. on, on the the eating habits and yes. the need for, for supplements. Yep. Um, and selfishly, just by have you go through and pick apart all the ones that I take as well. <laughs> but right. um, I think that is, I, I think that's something that, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's like those, I mean, first of all, those are excellent four tips, but that last one is really what I was kind of like, kind of caught my attention mm -hmm. because- and maybe it's because I feel like I do better with the first couple, but I think that last one is the one that is probably easily overlooked because it's just, I don't know. I mean, I don't think that like supplements have like a stigma to them the way maybe other things do this day and age and in our world. But I do think it's the thing that people are like, yeah, yeah, I'll get around to that. Like, I'll just go eat right. an apple. But like, right, yeah, exactly. But eating an apple one day a week isn't really better than nothing, but it's not really doing much on a day-to-day -day right. basis. Right. And, and, and what I have found like in the, in the work that we do with folks is that they discount the benefit that comes from supplementation until they commit, we have them commit to 90 days. And I kid you not after like two weeks, they're like, okay, sold. Like I, the, the focus is there where it wasn't before. And, and I, this doesn't replace like having a routine. This doesn't replace delegating or seeking support. But for me, it's kind of the easy button. It allows you to handle some things, to get give your body what it needs as you are also addressing some of the other things that are happening, right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, the truth is we bring our whole selves to work and our mm. whole selves to our personal life. Yeah. And we need to be doing the things we need to do for our whole self. And yep. that's more than just, you know, I, I feel like business owners are like, okay, I got to make sure I exercise, like whether or not they make time for it, it's a totally different conversation. Mm -hmm. But like, I feel like that is like been like, that is a drumbeat for the last couple of decades. You know, it's, it's like back when we were, well, I don't actually know how old you are, but I'm just gonna say back when we were kids, mm -hmm. um, there was the just say no to drugs, right? right like that was right. like the drumbeat of like the kid, the children of the eighties, the teens of the nineties or whatever. Right. That was like the drumbeat. And I feel like exercise has, you know, you see now like exercise is the new smoking, right? Like it was mm -hmm. like, don't start smoking. And now it's like, Hey, you need to exercise. I feel like that one has been like that drumbeat. Like we've been, it's been beaten over our heads for that one, but it's so much more than that. It is. And, and I like to disrupt the thinking by saying, if it's, if you have to choose between exercising and getting seven to eight hours of sleep, get the sleep. Yeah. That's when your body like heals itself. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I tell that to my kids all the time, but you know, I'm just the mother. So <laughs> uh, someday, someday they will realize my brilliance. But right. Right. I will probably be old. <laughs> And it will, they probably won't remember. Um, okay, cool. So this has been awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. I wanted to wrap up by making sure that my listeners do know where they can go if they want to reach out to you or they want to learn more about you. Um, I definitely, and we, of course, guys, you know this listeners that we will put this in the show notes 
Um, so you can go directly to the show notes for this episode and then be able to um, find these links. But why don't you go ahead and tell my listeners as well where they can find you? Sure. Uh, easiest place, place is kamiandrea.com. First name, last name, kamiandrea.com. And what I want to suggest is that they sign up for our newsletter. We've got a lot of exciting opportunities that I believe your listeners, especially if they followed along in our conversation up until now, <laughs> that they'll find valuable. Awesome. Okay, guys. So we will put the link to the website there. Um, so you guys can go and subscribe to the newsletter. I will be doing that as well. Um, I think that a business owner who has decided they don't need to continue growing is typically a business owner that won't be in business for too much longer. Mm. So we need to be being willing to open. And I know this podcast is typically all about referrals and all about business growth and what it looks like from that perspective to grow your business, but your health, your mental health and your mindset, what's going on between your ears, what's going on amongst your entire body, that matters as well if we want to have really productive and successful and fruitful businesses, however you define success and fruitful for you. So thank you again for being with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. What a fantastic interview. I hope that you guys really enjoyed that as much as I did. I mean, those red flags, like waking up tired and being irritable, I was like, oh, I never really thought about that as a red flag that I could be on the path for burning out or needing to be a little bit more proactive and protecting my mental health and taking that break and recharging when I need it. Those were great. And I really want to encourage you to go back and listen again to her four tips. Um, they were great as she was mapping them out for us. And sometimes things like that, we just need to hear more than once before we're like, okay, okay, I'll put them into practice. So awesome. I'm so glad you guys joined us for this interview and that we had that great conversation. Of course, the show notes, show notes, link for this episode is stacybrownrandall.com forward slash 265. So you can find all the information that we talked about and the links um, to Cami's website as well at that link, which is stacybrownrandall.com forward slash 265. That is the show notes link for this episode. And of course, this tra the transcripts will be there as well. And hey, before I let you go, I do want to remind you of what I talked about at the top of the episode, summer school, my friend, it starts tomorrow. And in this summer school, we're talking about generating more referrals and setting you up to have a strong strategy and a plan for how you're going to be able to start generating more referrals and what you should be doing and working on for the back half of this year. So if you want to sign up, remember, First Class Referrals 101 starts tomorrow, July 12th. It's our first class of a three-part class series. And of course, to sign up, you got to go to stacybrownrandall.com forward slash summer school. That's right. It's summer school time, baby. And it's going to be a lot of fun. You should definitely join me. Don't forget Stacy has an E. That link again is stacybrownrandall.com forward slash summer school. Okay. Coming up next week is episode 266. And of course, we are continuing with our summer series of the business owner mindset. We've got just a couple of amazing episodes left for you as we get ready to start winding down this series. So until then, you know what to do, my friend. Take control of your referrals and build a referable business. Bye for now.